Hey everybody. Hello. Good morning, Missoula. Sorry about that. That's a weird sketchy that intro. It's just like da, 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 da. Shaky. It's like well, But it's not shaky here. It's not shaky here, I hope. We got a lot going on for the show. We do. Yep. A ton. So I'm gonna start off with a little thing yeah. called weather and weather it's gonna be a scorcher this week. Is and it? of course it's threatening scattered showers this whole <coughs> entire week, so let's take a look at our national weather service, service? Oh. courtesy of it's always got weather.gov. High humidity in the morning, 57%. Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. So uh, 3% percent scattered thunderstorms, still in the highs in the 90s all week, and it should be cooling off into the high 80s. So that's not much cooler, but that's about it. <sighs> I mean, it is summer, and if we all think about it, Winter is kind of soon. Yeah. So we should enjoy the heat while we have it. Yep. This week we're having our movie making camp and <coughs> it is going off fairly well. I mean, the chain. We're it's going off the chain. Yep. So <laughs> today is our last day of filming for the movie making camp. Yeah. <coughs> and I'm going to make a cameo. You're appearance. going to make your little cameo. You're going to be a little police officer. <laughs> I'm a police officer. Yeah. <laughs> and so. I'm the hippie environmentalist. Totes. Totes. <laughs> it's fun. It's yeah, fun. I already made my part. I'm the crazy um, Paul. You're crazy. Crazy Paul, Paul who um, <laughs> says like the um, the that the city government is all corrupt <coughs> and all that stuff just for no reason. He just yeah. like has an axe to grind against the government. But that's my part in the movie. Um, yeah. No reason. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but uh, it's going good. Yeah. It's we'll feature it on Friday. Yep. It's going to be a live show on First Friday. First Friday here at MCAT is going to have all sorts of great stuff. Which include oh, one more thing. <laughs> oh, gotta go home. Technical tip. Oh, here we go. It's gonna feature our artist yeah. Ron Scholl and also the campers here at Movie Making Cl- Club, M- Movie Making Class Camp, whatever you want to name it. That's what it's called. And yeah, I mean, <coughs> you know, like coming up next month, we're gonna be talking about um, orientation. Orientation is coming up for MCAT. And for, for any of the any of you who are wanting to get involved with MCAT, with whether you want to make a movie that is both serious, silly, you can zombie. make a documentary, yeah, yeah. You know, like anything shows. you really want. Anything. We've had really successful documentarians lately. Oh yeah. With uh, Coal Road to China, that was a big movie that just came out by mm-hmm. Jan by and Harold, Harold Holm. Holm. Yeah. And um, and speaking of those of you who. Um, want to utilize MCAT's resources, but at the same time don't want to learn it. We also provide media assistant grants for um, many organizations. So the, the organizations that are becoming on here today, we've worked with them. Missoula Aging Service is going to be here. CASA. Uh, CASA of Missoula. Casa, yeah. And don't tell me, French Festival. Yep. French Festival, yep. Not French Festival. Don't. <laughs> So anyways, I'm going to talk about Megs. We have three brand new episodes coming on tonight, starting at 5.30 and extending until like 9.30, 10 o'clock. So it's all new tonight. Tuesday. No, it's Wednesday, Wednesday. night. <laughs> I wish it was Tuesday. Sounds but like a wild night. You, know, it was, uh, you wish it was Tuesday. You know, Monday, I guess Monday for me was just really long, like the Mondays. I know. I'm so glad I don't have to work 14 hours today. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so here's a little taste of what you guys can see on tonight's uh, programming at, on MCAT. And now, um, as a key partner in this effort, I think in Missoula, the university is really, and I'll keep arguing this publicly and privately, we really are looking to the university to continue to lead the way. Nancy, Belva, Eric, Eric's father, et cetera, et cetera. We really need the university to lead the way. That- and this is going to be on at 5 p.m. only on MCAT followed by a little bit of music like this. Thanks to my family, and thanks to all of you for coming and supporting this endeavor. Keep the music alive, folks. It's the spark that lights the flame. And the wheel goes You've been on the crime prevention officer for the Missoula Police Department. I've been in law enforcement for 17 years. I'm just going to give you a quick little background why I'm here. Um, my introduction to this issue came in 2009. Um, 
the Mayor's Downtown Advisory Committee was put together, uh, comprising of uh, the Police Department, City Attorney's Office, and uh, we took it was to take on aggressive panhandling and undesirable behaviors. And that's going to be on at 8.30 p.m. The League of Women Voters Tackle Homelessness. Nice. All and sorts uh, of great programming yeah. going on tonight. But the speaking of programming, we are expecting a great program to be coming up in the next month or so, the Celtic Fest. And Josh got a little um, up close and personal with some of them. <laughs> up close and personal. <laughs> up close and personal. I did, yeah. I, 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 Wait, am I wrong? Yeah. Am I no, wrong? I mean, I, I interviewed <coughs> some people who were deeply involved with the Celtic Festival, we should take a look. So yeah, <laughs> while we're taking a look, we'll bring out the Fringe Festival for people to come hang out with us, and we'll be right back with uh, the Fringe Fest people. The fifth annual Celtic Festival Missoula is a celebration of Celtic culture primarily featuring music and dance, but also crafts, food, beer, and whiskey. With 100 volunteers and plenty of business sponsors, this free admission event draws in six to 7,000 people. The festival, which is held at Karis Park, was expanded from a single-day event last year to a double-day event this year. We caught up with the festival's founder, Bob Lukes, to see what this year's event had to offer. Well, you know, um, we have different musical events to some degree every year. I mean, uh, some performers, we uh, kind of have them return. And, and so, uh, I mean, this year we have, uh, I think, some of the most exciting things are... Uh, Eric Riegler and Dirk Frameth are playing at 7 o'clock tonight, and uh, Eric is a master piper, and uh, Dirk Frameth is an uh, incredible guitarist, and uh, Eric makes his living doing uh, soundtracks, and so he played on Braveheart and Titanic and a lot of famous music uh, movies, and so they're going to do some uh, great tunes for us. Later in the evening, we have Enter the Haggis, which is a Celtic rock band from uh, Toronto, Canada. They're going to be fantastic. Um, the uh, the Young Dubliners are going to be the main performers tomorrow night, and so they're kind of returning by popular demand. And plus, uh, I don't want to lessen anybody else. We have so many shows uh, throughout the day, uh, like tomorrow, during the day, a lot of more traditional Celtic folk groups and uh, a lot of uh, Irish dancers tomorrow afternoon. Um, tomorrow there's a kid zone from uh, noon until 6 p.m. where we have just a ton of events all for kids. We've got a uh, Irish storytelling, Irish dance lessons, uh, freckle contest, red hair contest. Uh, Monty's going to be out here in a kilt tomorrow at 4 o'clock for all the kids. And so really a family event and uh, a ton of stuff going on here. A lot of fun vendors too. We've got a lot of great food out here and uh, some unique Celtic merchandise that you just won't see uh, anywhere else. We also caught up with Seattle-based Celtic folk trio, the Gothard Sisters, who shared why Celtic Festival Missoula means so much to them. Well, the Celtic Festival, it's a very special festival, and it's all about celebrating Celtic music, music from Ireland, music from Scotland, and this, these, are, these are countries that are, they have such a great um, culture and heritage, and it's so wonderful to see so many people coming to celebrate that music and we love to play it. There's a lot of energy and joy and excitement in it. Um, makes you want to dance and a festival devoted to Celtic music and you know all the booths around the food and the whole atmosphere is just really really fun so I think it's a special festival. They explained what kind of music they play and how it generated into the state of music that it is today. Well we, uh, we play a mixture. It's uh, Celtic music mostly. Um, and then we also have some classical roots and we also play just folk music in general. We write a lot of our own new tunes in a Celtic style and we also, it's a, it's a huge performance aspect too. There's a lot of funny stuff in the show <laughs> and we do Irish step dancing and had years of training in that. Now we just have fun with it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's our, our music, I, I would describe it as new Celtic. Um, we have Irish um, ancestors, and so we have a lot of that. And listen, when we were growing up, our parents played a lot of Irish music for us. And so we would just dance around to that in our living room, and there's just special memories with it, I think. And uh, then we got into Irish dance, and so the music goes with the dance. And um, we were classical violinists at first, so we were playing violin, and then we were Irish dancing. And we just thought, you know, we need to have the music to go with the dance. We need to have the dance tunes. And so we started picking up and fiddling. We switched to that. Yes, yes. switched over to the other side. Oh, kind of the great divide. No. <laughs> yeah, once we got into fiddling, it's sort of like not really going back much. Because it's so much fun. It's so joyful. There's 
no strings attached, kind of, and everyone can just enjoy it and have fun together. It's very, it's very much a community music. At first glance, many people think that the Gothard sisters are triplets, but is that really the case? Yeah, we are sisters. We're not for triplets. Real. We're actually eight years apart um, in age, and so we're all. Oh, Solana's not twenty yet, but we're all in our twenties. <laughs> The Gothard sisters have found a special connection to Montana, and with the city of Missoula embracing Celtic culture so thoroughly through the festival, the Gothard sisters recognize the value of playing here. Well, we were here last year um, for the Celtic festival, and since then we live in Seattle, um, Seattle area, and so we actually we come out here all the time. We we tour nationally. We're around around the country, but. You know, we, we keep coming back to Montana for some reason. It's, it's close to us, for one thing. Yeah. But also, you know, we've played all over the state, and we just keep coming back to Montana because there's something about it. And, and so the Missoula Celtic Festival is perfect for that because not only is it in, it's in Montana, but it's also the Celtic music. Mm -hmm. And the Gothard sisters acknowledge how Celtic Festival Missoula fosters stronger community cohesion. Any reason for the community to come together these days um, because now with the advent of the internet and social media and YouTube and everything, you know, like you could easily stay at home and watch all this stuff on your computer, but there's no social aspect to that at all. And so festivals like this, you can go and see concerts, the tickets are expensive, um, but the community festivals like this, and this one's free, it's just a place for people to come and enjoy all those things live together. And it's not like you can hit replay, it's live. You know? There's a certain element with live, live music and live shows that you just can't really get through screens and it's like a, a community experience yeah. to like be there at the same moment when the same thing happens in the one show and you mm -hmm. all know what happened and yeah. it's neat that way. Executive Director, Bob Leggett, Executive Director of the Fringe Festival, and Lisa Venuti, a performing artist at the Fringe Festival. Yeah. Welcome to our Hi show. Guys. Good Hi. morning. Great. Great. Nice Great. to be here. Yeah. yeah. Tell us about your show. Oh, well, you want to go first? Yeah, Lisa. Lisa. Lisa's here promoting our show. We're actually, the Fringe, the official dates are August the 13th through the 17th, mm -hmm. but we're kicking things off a little early because we have the Brink Gallery for the entire month of August, oh, nice. so we're going to kick things off this Friday, at First Friday, and Lisa Venuti is one of our performers. She will be performing every hour on the hour from 5 o'clock to 9 o'clock, so that's five performances, wow. and then we will have some musical interludes. Uh, between Miss Liss and her ukulele nice. and uh, Miss Cincinnati will be the two musical guests that will alternate in between Lisa's show. So cool. Lisa, tell me about your show. <laughs> well, <laughs> where do I start? <laughs> um, the, the name of the piece, um, sort of a last minute name that came out, is called Beat Preparation 1 through 5. I like that. And maybe as the title implies, it does involve beats. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it involves beats. I am personally on the stage um, as my, my personal presence is there. And it also involves some uh, a poem, actually some written word that's recorded. And um, I'm actually using um, a bit of video from a performance piece that I did about 30 years ago. Cool, yeah, tell us about that, because this is your first time performing live since 1985, right? This is correct. It's my yeah. first time, I guess, performing for the public. Okay. Because the, way, the reason I used to perform, do performance art in, back in the South Bay Area in California during the 80s. Yeah. And it's been a long time, and yeah. um, moved to Missoula in 89, and kind of put that on the shelf. And then last spring, I took a media arts class at the university. And that's kind of what how I got launched back into it. Good. So I this piece kind of came from that class. So I was able to perform it for the class, but it was just a you know a small group of people. So this will be my first public performance nice. in about thirty years. Wow, <laughs> that's nerve wracking. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it'll be great. You did a great job. I'm I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. I'm really glad I got the opportunity to do it. So. Mm -hmm. What's yeah. the process involved? 
in this beat preparation? Uh, well, you know, it's kind of interesting because through the class we sort of explore different ideas. I've always wanted to, most of my pieces usually involve some sort of uh, um, exploration of ritual mm. in some way. And I love food oh, yeah. and I love to cook and beets are one of my favorites. And uh, <laughs> so I really wanted to explore my relationship with food on a kind of a very, very visceral level. Oh, interesting. A level that kind of goes beyond just eating and that sort of thing. Um, and so that's where I, I started with the beets. Um, I started using, uh, well, I thought of having this, this uh, video or the tape that I had I had to have it. It was actually in Super 8 originally. I don't know if you guys remember Super 8. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the movie? <laughs> and, <yeah. laughs> and I had to have it digitized. Oh, wow. Which, so it was the first time I'd actually seen this footage in 30 years. Wow. Um, I kind of remembered what it was about, but yeah. I hadn't seen it. And so I incorporated that, incorporated the, the word, most of the word in the tape, actually, that I speak was written by my son when he was 11. Oh, cool. And it just, I had a lot of things in it and then pared it down and added other things and it just kind of all really came together well, um, all these different aspects. So nice. it's, um, I would say an exploration of, of food on a visceral level, but beyond that, way beyond that, I think I idea of resurrection of self, yeah. which is kind of the theme for me, resurrecting. Yeah that side of me that's that's going out and doing this yeah. cool. well, yeah, well, we, you know they all have to we all have this to look forward to this Friday for first Friday at the mm -hmm. brink well I absolutely hope you can come again it's every hour on the hour and Five it's a short nine. piece it's only about <laughs> six or seven minutes long okay. and so I'll perform it and then do it again yeah right. Five awesome. Times. Sounds Great. Awesome. so yeah. that's gonna be kind of a lot of fun we are officially kicking off with the uh, a big party at the top hat on August the 12th and that's what we call our taste of the French and we'll have some performances there as well as musical acts and we're gonna have a great silent auction the community is very very supportive of the French festival and has donated more than 20 different uh, gift items wow. including a hundred dollars in gift certificates to Noodle Express and big gift baskets from City uh, City Brew Coffee and from the Green Light and a lot of other local vendors have, have put some great gifts together. Uh, we've been sponsored by three of the breweries which are, uh, <coughs> let's see, Bayern, Kettle House and Tamarack. Nice. So they're all going to be sponsoring what we call Friends Central which will be our little place there at the brink. Every night will be a get together uh, time for the community and for the performers to have a place where they can come and hang out and, and get to know each other. Nice. So that'll be going on at Friends Central every night. First, I really want to thank our sponsors and our biggest sponsor has been The Trail 103.3 Jack FM. They have been amazing. Uh, we've done interviews on there with uh, Craig and with Jeanette and we've got a couple more coming up so they are just been fantastic. The Top Hat Lounge, Nick, is amazing. He's great. He's hosting. They're donating the proceeds for the entire night uh, to us for that. So it's kind of a really cool thing. The Green Light, Sabrina, it is amazing. I love her. And then uh, KBGA over at UM is, is a great sponsor, too. And then we've also had some good supporters, the Independent, the mm -hmm. Missoula Copy Center, yeah. MCAT, yeah. and uh, <laughs> ABC Terry Elanders Wake oh, Up great. Montana. Awesome. It's also actually our uh, creative director, Michelle Richaud, will be on there, uh, do taping today, and it'll be broadcast next week. Nice. So awesome. we really want to thank all of our fantastic supporters. If you go to our website, which is zootownfringe.org, you can click on the sponsor button and you can see all the people that are making this event possible. Um, and our board with Michelle Richo is our creative director and um, just everyone that's involved, her husband Effie with his 360 Creative that are getting the program together and getting that out to mm -hmm. the printers tomorrow so we'll have them ready by Friday. Uh, everyone who's worked on, on our board, especially her intern, Autumn Torres, she is amazing. I don't know <laughs> what Michelle would do without her. <laughs> and we just thank all of them. We've got some a couple of events we wanted to highlight. Mm -hmm. 
we've got one thing that's really cool. It's called the Fringe Float Sing Along. So actually on the river, Tuesday, August 12th at 2 o'clock. They're going to get together and do a sing along along the, the river. Mm -hmm. And the, t the top of the hat, uh, or top hat, Taste of the Fringe, which is fantastic. We've also got Porch Fest, which will be along 4th Street on Thursday, the 14th. And basically, we've got six homes along 4th Street between Orange and Higgins. And there'll be a live band on the porch, and, mm -hmm. and the audience can just sit in the yard, and it's all free. And there'll be all different types of music from Carla Green's trio to Cami Cody to a whole lot of different things going on. We've also got two full days of uh, dramas going on at the Roxy and the Crystal. That'll be all day Friday and Saturday. Interestingly enough, almost every show is a female one woman show. So I don't know what they're saying about our community, but yeah. it's going to be really interesting. I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, Katie Rubin, who's coming up from um, L.A. She does a show called Why I Die, the Comedy, which is really interesting. And we've also got our very own <coughs> Maura Keith. And so a lot of great shows are happening there. All of our events, if you go to our website and click on Schedule, and it by the hour it tells you where the event is if there's a cost our events range from free up to a maximum of twelve dollars <laughs> all right and it's all there cool well we're, we're, we're running out of time and we have a <laughs> bunch more guests waiting for us in the hallways <laughs> and we'll be right back with a phoner about splash montana so stick with us thanks thanks Hiking in bear country like this, it's important to remember your essentials, like bear spray and knowing how to use it. Liam, where's my bear spray? Uh, I put it in the bottom of your pack. I didn't mean... How am I supposed to get it quickly? When adventuring in bear country, remember, bring bear spray and know how to use it. Hike in groups, make noise, and don't run. Be bear aware. Are you interested in pursuing a job in television and need experience, or are you interested in picking up a new skill? Missoula Community Access Television is a place for you. MCAT can get you trained and ready so you can hit the ground running in television. Call us at 542-6228 or email us MCAT.org. Here's your best spray, babe. I don't need it. I can outrun them. Look, I ran track in high school. No, you can't. You're not supposed to run from bears. And you did the shot put. Okay, I'll spray down. What? No, don't spray it! Ah, ah. Hey. My face is burning! My face is burning now! Ah. When hunting in bear country, understand. It puts you at risk. Be smart. Be safe. Be bear aware. Hey, we're back. We're and back. we don't have that phoner. But yeah. we have our uh, Missoula Agent Service yeah. people here right here. We're here with Mary Olson, volunteer for Missoula Agent Services, and Jordan Lyons. Uh, what is your title for Missoula? I'm a resource specialist. Resource yes. specialist Agent for services. Missoula Agent Services. Awesome. Great. Well, and we're here to talk about Social Security, right? Correct, yeah. Somewhat. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, just like you said, um, Mary's one of our amazing volunteers at Missoula Aging Services. And uh, Mary has a real wealth of knowledge about Social Security. She worked uh, for the Social Security Administration as a claims representative and a technical expert for 29 years, nearly 29 years, in Washington, Alaska, and Montana. And so we're, we're taking full advantage of her expertise by, uh, <laughs> by having a, a, a brown bag luncheon on Thursday, August 14th at 11.30, where, uh, where people can come and get answers to their common questions about Social Security. 
Um, so we're really looking forward to that. And we're just asking that people um, give us a call to register for that. Our number is 728-7682. We just want to get those calls in advance because space is limited. So Yeah. yeah. Well, how, how much space do you guys have for that class? We're hoping to get about 15 people for this first one, and if it's a big success, um, you know, we'll just kind of build on that. We'll see where we go with that. So. What yeah. can people expect to learn from these classes? Like, what is the what are you teaching? One of the there are hundreds of good questions that people ask and should ask, and just to give a sample, I think one of the biggest, most common <coughs> questions is one we all are going to ask at some point. When should I start? When can I start my Social Security? Uh, should I start at 62, 66, 70? Mm -hmm. And the age that a person elects to start at Social Security will have an effect on the amount. Um, just to go through three brief scenarios to give folks an idea of what I mean by that. A person who waits until what's called full retirement age, which is age 66 for people born between 1943 and 1954, mm -hmm. people retiring now, um, a person can receive his unreduced benefit, which is uh, based on his earnings and a formula that's applied to calculate the benefit. A person can also start benefits as early as the, full, the first <coughs> full month or 62 at a reduced rate. And a person can also wait all the way until age 70 to get even a higher benefit. Wow. Um, so people are definitely encouraged to wait to start. Oh, it's a good security. question. It depends. It is such a personal, unique, you know, a choice depending on many factors. Um, and just to throw in a few specific numbers, just to give folks an idea of what I just said. Um, if a person waits until 66 and is entitled to a thousand dollars a month, let's say, in their social security benefit. That same person, had he started benefits at age 62, would get $750 mm. a month permanently. If he waited till age 70 and accrued these, what they're called delayed retirement credits, he would get $1,320 a month. Interesting. So there are some specific numbers. Right. Yeah. What about working? How does how do, what if someone wants to keep working but and also receive social security? And more and more, that is such a popular um, item. So many people, it seems, more and more need to or want to keep working while getting social security. First thing to know is at full retirement age, that age 66 that I referred to, a person can work and earn anything they want, uh, there's no limit. So go back to work full time, mm -hmm. good to go. If you are younger than full retirement age, then there is an annual limit on earnings. Um, if a person exceeds that limit, then some of the benefits have to be withheld during the year. Mm -hmm. And during our session, we would be, I would be prepared to go into, you know, quite a bit of detail as to how that offset, how that withholding works. Um, so it's, it's important for people to know and understand that because a lot of people I have seen over the years, they kind of, if they don't fully understand how that work requirement works, then they t might get overpaid, owe benefits back. So okay. it is an important concept. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Mm -hmm. So this class is to help um, people navigate their social security and when is the right time, how to, how to apply, how to basically how to do everything. How to apply, we definitely are prepared to show people the website that has just a wealth of information on it. Um, we can show them how to navigate, how to create an account, where you can get your benefit estimate now. Anybody can. You can. Mm -hmm. um, so this would be kind of like uh, very like um, explains in the details. It's, it's a very Q and A oriented class. It is Q and A. There's no. There's not going to be any formal presentation. It's just an informal. That's ask great. the questions, and we'll. That's we'll try nice. to get the answers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And if we don't know the answers, I will find them. Um, so yeah, well, we're hoping nice about that it'll benefit. It's nice about too. these in um, in hands-on classes that it gets people like talking about it. It's more like a um, social security um, study session. Mm -hmm. So you just hang out, yeah. do some studying, yeah. talk about it. Is like 
Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. I was there, and I can help you with this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like it. Definitely. Yeah, Great. on a general plane. You know, if it gets too specific, and, which it could, and that's fine, then we can offer people to, you know, set up an appointment with me. I, I do take one on one appointments now and try to help people sort out their Social Security issues. So before we go, where can people get information and get involved? Um, the first thing they should do is just give us a call at Missoula Aging Services at 728 7682. And we'll just get them signed up or help them out with any other public benefits they're wondering about or any other services um, that they're looking to get plugged into. Perfect. Oh, great. Great. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. So we still have a bunch of uh, <laughs> stuff going on for today. Um, we're going to have um, Kirsten from Casa of Missoula here. So we'll be right back with her. Okay, so we drowned the fire, yep. stirred it, mm -hmm. drowned it again. Mm -hmm. And now just feel if it's cold. Yeah. Cool. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I know. I already posted it. everyone. Yeah, so, uh, we're here with Kirsten <laughs> Verrer. Wow, you said it right. <laughs> and Perfect. And you're, you're going to be, you're talking about the, what is it? The Montana Mucker. I'm here with Casa of Missoula, which stands for Court Appointed Special Advocates. And we're a nonprofit in town that advoc we recruit community volunteers to advocate for kids in court mm -hmm. who have experienced abuse or neglect. And um, we're hosting our annual Mud Run fundraiser. This is our fourth year in the mud business, mm -hmm. and it's called the Montana Mucker, and it's going to be September 6th at the Missoula Fairgrounds. Nice. Yeah. Uh, last year you guys sponsored the, um, the event <coughs> that was over at, next to Big Sky High School. Yeah, the yeah. equestrian park. So the first year we put on our own mud run called the Mad Mudder, and we were actually out there digging the course and oh, moving wow. the hay bales. and. It was just taking a lot of our time and kind of focus off our mission. Mm -hmm. And so when the Dirty Dash, an outside group from Utah, they're kind of a road show. When they came to town, they were gracious enough to partner with us, but um, we've been wanting to make it a local event again and bring it back to Missoula, um, back to the original, yeah, Great. Missoula Mud Run. And so this is our opportunity to go local and yeah, have our awesome. own mud run again. Uh, how can so. people register for this? Um, there's a few ways. They can go to Bob Wards if they want to do things in person. If um, you're an internet person, you can go to the Montana Mucker website, just mo www.montanamucker.com, and register online, or they can call the CASA office too, 542-1208. Um, so, yeah. Very cool. So when is, um, for, for the audience, or could, I mean, and for myself also, when and where is this taking place again? Oh, sure. It's September 6th. It's a Saturday, and it's at the Missoula Fairgrounds. The first race wave is 930, and the last one is 3. And there's a kids' run, too. And there's going to be 12, um, well, actually, it's over two dozen obstacles and 12, like, pretty significant obstacles. And then multiple mud pits and a mile of really thick mud, and then the whole course is muddy and wet. Mm -hmm. And so when is the end of registration? Can you register the day of? You can actually register the day of, yeah, or you can register before. It's a little cheaper if you register early. Um, it's fifty dollars for adults and ten dollars for kids. Okay. And September is such a great month because it's that's when things the weather starts getting a little colder. And yeah. like if you did in August, I think it would just like it's. Just, Hot. This this week is a yeah, heat wave. Yeah, it's really it's been really hot. And then the slight chance of thunderstorms. There's never thunderstorms when there's the slight chance of thunderstorms. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's just um, yeah, it's just the yeah, heat and it's still it's hot just, enough, yeah. but not too hot. So. Yeah, that'll be How many that's people good. show up for this? Um, a couple thousand. Wow. Yeah, wow. last year we had um, over three thousand. So 
we're hopeful for another good turnout and there's going to be food vendors and music so people can come spectate too it's mm -hmm. pretty fun to watch yes, and so i've yeah. done it the last few years and it's super fun yeah. you get mud everywhere like yeah. belly button ear crevice yeah. everything so mm -hmm. that's a good time so is there any, anything else you'd like to bring up? Any other organizations that are on board with this as well that you didn't mention? Oh, um, the Wild Weenie is partnering with us as one of our food vendors, so that's mm. kind of fun. And yeah, and Bob Wards has been our main sponsor, so mm. I want to give a shout out to them. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> that's my phone. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> I, I, I don't know why I'm that's like, oh. <laughs> Anyways, um, so yeah, um, if you want to get down and dirty, the um, the, the mad uh, mucker. Um, yeah, the Montana mucker. We were calling it the Missoula mucker too. There was a race in Helena. Um, so yeah, a mud yes. run too. But yes. yeah, <laughs> this is the Missoula. Call mucker. it the Helena hogs or something. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. 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 Yeah, cool. thanks for being Yeah, on. thanks so much. Yeah. All right, so um, we'll be back. We still have plenty of time to talk about city council and events that are coming yeah. up this week. Um, Noel, Noel has something, Josh has something, and I basically am just going to commentate on stuff. Great. Nice. Time. Great. Thanks, yeah. Kirsten. Yeah, Thank thanks, you. you guys. So we'll be right back right after. Hello and welcome to MCAT. MCAT stands for Missoula Community Access Television. We are a nonprofit group that helps the community get into broadcasting and communication. How? I'm not sure. We. <laughs> if it's too formal, I mean, people are just gonna be like, oh, that's boring. And then if it's too, like, oh, yeah, you don't give a crap. La vida. <laughs> Are you filming this? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> how we train anybody who comes through our doors how to shoot, edit, and produce videos. Whether you like to be in front of the camera or behind, we provide the equipment you need to get started. So come on down. <laughs> Hey, we're, we're right back. We're back. <laughs> Hello, everyone. We are back. Now it's off to City Council. What's happening now? Yep. Oh, well, City Council was pretty interesting. There's some interesting sound bites. Um, so there was a South and 39th Street Council report, and a guy by the name of Jeff Stevens was there talking about irrigation for Honeysuckle Park, and he worked with this fellow, uh, his friend named Brad, and they were they're trying to get it irrigated, but uh, he uh, his friend passed away, so he, he made a promise mm -hmm. to irrigate this park. So let's hear from uh, Mr. Jeff Stevens. News. At that time, I promised Brad that we would work together to secure the funding for the irrigation system in that park. Brad never got to see the playground. A few days later, he died, leaving a widow and growing children. Our neighborhood association planted a tree and placed a memorial plaque in the park to honor him. His widow watered it for years while she still lived there. Today, the plaque is still there, and the tree is dead and gone, a victim of the lack of irrigation in that park. The plaque stands as a silent rebuke to our failure and my failure in particular to keep a promise made years ago. We want that park to flourish. I want to be able to replant that tree and watch it flourish as well. We would very much appreciate the support of this council, the city administration, and the parks department to achieve this end. Thank you. Thank All you. right. Oh, that's so heartwarming. Yeah, kinda so. Sad. Yeah, kind of sad, but yeah. hopefully they'll get the, it seemed like Mayor Engen had positive feedback for Good. Mr. Stevens, so Good. it looks like they'll get that irrigation put into place. Yeah. yeah. Um, another report was um, a report on the community forum, and it was uh, actually by her name is Mary Laporte giving a report. But at any rate, <laughs> uh, Mary uh, talks about uh, MCAT, how they talked about MCAT. Oh, nice. How that was a represent. Yeah, representing yeah. MCAT. So let's hear from Mary. This is how. Um, neighborhoods could use MCAT more effectively to um, seek volunteers, uh, promote fundraising projects, or promote their neighborhood council meetings. So his presentation was well, 
well received. Then we also heard from uh, two representatives from Republic Service. Okay, so, and then the next report she's <laughs> going to talk about is uh, uh, Republic Services, and they talk about, I don't know if you guys know about this, but... they the, We talked about them on the last show, Republic Service. No, they did a presentation on another community forum, I think it was like last week. Yeah. And they were talking about all their stuff, how they're trying to utilize recycling. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But of course, and they also said that, um, I think that the biggest thing they said is that anybody who were, make a recycling plant that deals with plastics would be instant millionaires. Think about it. Like there's no, like you always have to go to Oregon, California, um, Washington to, uh, you know, that's why they have that little five cent label on your, on your bottle. So it's like five cents per plastic bottle of your soda. And if they started one here in Montana, they oh yeah, it'd be millionaires yeah. instantly. Yep, millionaires. Millionaires. Well, at any rate, uh, uh, Mary Laporte talks <laughs> about plastic blue bags. I don't know if you guys know about the blue bags. If you get, a we blue have bag. one here at MCAT. Yeah, I have one at my apartment, and uh, what are they? They're, they're like uh, the blue. Actually, we have a blue trash bin that's specific for specifically for recycling. Mm -hmm. But you just put in whatever you put in all the recycling yeah. materials and they separate it for you exactly and that's what this sound bite is so let's listen uh, to sorry it. I didn't awesome. mean to step on your toes there was a lot of interest in the recycling part of what uh, Republic Services does including the blue bag program where residents can just purchase um, a blue bag and they can submit mixed recyclables and then they also have the opportunity to purchase a, a container for twelve dollars a month, and um, there really was quite a bit of interest from. So yeah, so I thought that was pretty amazing that you that they mix their that they mix your recyclables for you as long as you put them all in a blue bag. Yeah. So oh, that's me. Get your blue bags, and you know. <laughs> and just twelve dollars a month. How much is it for a bag? A month. Um, I don't know how much the bags are. Probably as much as, you know, like expensive trash bags. Yeah. And like they said. Um, in terms of recycling, you know, if you're willing to recycle, you should be willing to make the extra effort yeah. to recycle because it does yeah. take a little more effort than it you does. want to. But it's just all it takes is just like when you're throwing something away, you have to look at it and think to yourself, can this be recycled? More times it's yes. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's good to like try to clean the food or soda or water out of your. Yes. Food. Yeah. Try to get it as clean Get as the chemicals possible. out, get out the base and acidities from mm -hmm. the sodas. Yeah. I agree. So, I agree. I agree as well. Recycling is good. Um, the next thing was a shout out from Marilyn Marler. She recognizes the Montana Conservation Corps, and I thought this was interesting because I actually worked as a crew leader for the Montana Cons Conservation Corps the first summer Oof. I was here. So That's let's, a mouthful. let's I hear. said all of that in one breath. <laughs> <laughs> Impressive. <laughs> I impressed myself. But anyway, um, Marilyn Marler here is talking about. Uh, the Montana Conservation Corps, so let's listen to her. Awesome. I want to recognize four people in the audience, four out of five people in the audience. <laughs> um, these are some folks who I met earlier this season on Mount Sentinel doing weed control. These guys are um, with the Montana Conservation Corps. That is a branch of AmeriCorps, and they've been spending their summer taking care of, in, well, the opposite of taking care of, killing noxious weeds in wilderness areas and natural areas around western Montana, which is real important conservation work. You're helping biodiversity we appreciate what you're doing and thanks for coming out to City Council I don't know if you remember killing weeds with me on the mountain but I remember you guys it's good to see you Thank you. all right nice. so that was yeah cool. they're killing weeds cool. uh, and they think they still have that sheep going around not on South Hills but I think now that no no they're not on the sheep north going around oh my god the, uh, lot, the sheep is going down and they, they're, they're the ones that have been eating a lot of there. the noxious weeds and yeah they specifically yeah, like, hounds like it because like they that. like the flavor yeah, they like the flavor. I mean, they, they probably eat the <laughs> native weeds, too, but I, I bet yeah. they eat more of the noxious but weeds. But the noxious weeds are They grow higher, and they they're like bigger, it. and they're just everywhere. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> um, the final thing was, cheap. this was probably the most controversial um, part of the whole city council meeting. Oh, oh. Very controversial. It was a change of order brought on by Jordan Hess, so let's just, let's just listen to this. Yeah. You're building this up, hopefully. The committee report happens in... Public Works. Mr. Hess. Thank you. Uh, I move uh, the City Council authorize and approve the Mayor to sign a change order with Quality Construction to remove, replace, and recompact soils at the new equipment storage building at the City Shops in the amount of uh, $34,500, and I can uh, field questions as needed. 
Thank you, Mr. Hess. Is there discussion on the motion, Mr. Wilkins? So I wasn't here for Wednesday. Can you briefly tell me why we have to redo it, Mr. Hess? Yeah, uh, Mr. Wilkins, it's a good question. Uh, basically, they removed some asphalt um, and found that the soil density underneath that asphalt was compromised, um, and there were a number of non-native soils. Um, so they have to, um, the biggest item is removing those soils and then recompact, relaying and recompacting them so that they're suitable to build on. Further discussion? Anyone in the audience care to comment? With that, we'll have a roll call vote. On All the right, motion. so they do the roll call vote, and um, uh, Hertz voted no, and uh, Wilkins abstained. So usually it's a unanimous yes. So I mean, a lot of times if a um, council member is not there for the um, explanation meeting, he usually abstains. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, because it's like they don't want to. I mean, it's it's good because a lot of times it's um, they gotta. Be careful because they don't just want to blindly agree to something. Right, and I, right. And he's been there long enough to know better. Yeah. Yeah. That's absolutely. Yeah. Huh. So, so that's anyways. city council for today. Nice. Yeah, and we have plenty of time for some yeah. events. Up next, we have got some events. Um, so this is what's going on today, Wednesday, at 8 a.m. at the Missoula Food Bank. There is a book drive where you can go in there and drop off your books and you know to be donated to families to go along with the book um, drive. Missoula Food Bank. It's going on until Friday, August 8th. Oh, thank you. And books will be sold to help raise funds for the food bank. Uh, there's Out to Lunch, as is every Wednesday, where it's from 11 to 2. And this is a reforming arts, like, you know, like little food out to lunch thing. They'll have a band. They have kids' activities. Uh, the kids' activities is put on by Spectrum, and the music is uh, John Florid Floridas Trio. John Floridas. John Flordis. He trio. was voted um, Sorry, John. best musician of last year. Cool. Yeah. Well, that's cool. today at Out to Lunch at Karis Frack, 11 to 2. Nice. Um, at the Children's Museum of Missoula, there's an art series at 4 p.m. And this is from 4 to 4.30. I'm pretty sure it's almost every Wednesday. And you can just learn basic art skills and a little bit of art history through fun projects. There is a pint night for Anna Meals tonight at 5 p.m. at the Northside Kettle House. Um, so this will be from 5 to 8 at the Northside Kettle House. So 50 cents from every pint sold will benefit Anna Meals. If over 400 pints are sold, the Kettle House will donate an extra $100 to Anna Meals. So go out and drink for cats. Um, Anna Meals is an animal food bank and a no-kill adoption center. And they supplement food needs of like shelter and rescue groups and homeless animals and homebound, like elderly, disabled people that have animals. So they just help out all over the community. Um, and since January 2014, they've distributed over 15,000 pounds of pet food. Yeah, so nice. that's awesome. Yeah, Anna Meals does a good job. So does not Humane Society of Western Montana. We gotta take care of our furry friends. It's a win-win <coughs> situation too. It really is, yeah. I love those little animals. So there's a farmer field day conserving with soil and water today at 5 p.m. at Foothill Farm. Um, so it's just way, they're just learn, teaching you ways that you can add innovative soil and water conservation practices into your farm operation. They'll learn about tools that are being practiced by Foothill Farm in San, Ignatian, San Ignatius and Deluge Farm in Camas Prairie. Yeah, so that'll be cool. Um, so that's what I have going on for Wednesday events. Next up I have Thursday events. There's meditation for beginners tomorrow morning at 7.30 a.m. at Learning Center at Red Willow. What? This is for ideal for beginners with little or no experience with meditation. It'll provide an introduction to three meditation techniques. Mindfulness meditation, compassionate meditation, and practice and loving kindness meditation. Uh, the classes will include discussion about current neuroscience findings on the benefits of meditation and tools for establishing your own daily practice. This is um, at the Learning Center at Red Willow, 825 West Kent Avenue. Uh, there is an Oreos Underground Research Sym Symposium. This will be at 1 p.m. at the University Center Rooms um, tomorrow, at th rooms 330 and 331 in the UC. This is the Office of Research and Educational Opportunities for Students. are excited to announce the sixth annual Oreos Undergraduate Research Symposium. Mm -hmm. The symposium features undergraduate researchers from science, technology, engineering, mathematical disciplines across campus. 
Undergraduates will present their posters from 1 to 4 on Thursday, and the poster judges will be circulating from 115 to 345. Uh, the top three posters will receive monetary awards, and the awards will be announced at 4. So yeah, so it's who's got the best research. Nice. Interesting. Um, as always, on every Thursday at 4 p.m. at the Fort Missoula Plant Garden, there's a Native Plant Garden Work and Learn Day. They will, the education topic for this week is on an identification and ad eradication of management of invasive weeds, which they should probably just get sheep. So that's from 4 to 6 at Fort Missoula. Um, <coughs> and as always, every Thursday, there's downtown tonight. Karis Park from 5.30 to 8.30. It's the same as out to lunch. They have food vendors, um, they have kids' activities, they have a band. And so the kids' activity is put on by Missoula Butterfly House and Insectarium. And the music is Ian McFerrin Band. It's tomorrow. Uh, every Thursday, there's also a Treasure State Toastmasters at 6 p.m. at Community Medical Center, where this is a workshop. <coughs> Excuse me, workshop style program where participants can hone their speaking and leadership skills in a low pressure and supportive atmosphere. So you can just go and, you know, exactly what I said hone your speaking skills, uh, increase your confidence, become a better speaker, become a better leader, and communicate more effectively. And then also at the top at tomorrow night, there is um, this musician called Charles Bradley. On Monday's show, they, I showed the trailer of a movie that they showed at the Top Hat about him. And so he will be playing at the Top Hat tomorrow. Um, the show starts at 8, it's 21 plus, $15 in advance, or $17 at the, you know, at the day of the show. You can go to YouTube to check out his sound. It's Charles Bradley and the Extraordinaires, or else watch a rerun of Monday's show where I showed the trailer of his movie. Yeah. Um, there's also the City Band will be at Fodder Park at 8 tomorrow, and there's also music at the Top Hat, Sunrise, and Monks. And then as I've got some events for Friday, too. So Friday events, there is a Sierra Club Great Burn backpack trip, 9 a.m. at the Great Burn area on Friday. They're going to be backpacking from Friday to Sunday along the Montana-Idaho border above Cache Creek and Crooked Fork in the wildest reaches of the northern Bitterroot Mountains. Um, <coughs> so it'll be... Let's see, 15 mile trip, moderately strenuous with some off travel, off trail travel required, and hikers will learn about local management plans and efforts to further protect this unique wildland. So if that sounds good to you, you can contact John Wolverton at yodelingdog at hotmail.com. <laughs> Why? Yodeling dog. Hotmail? And hotmail, of course. Um, no, on Friday, there is a Food for Change food drive for UGM of Missoula. This event will take place on August 1st and 2nd from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. at Rose Hours. So it looks like you can just give away some food or buy some food. Go to Rose Hours. Mm -hmm. uh, at Lolo Hot Springs this weekend, there is a Portal Music Festival, which I kind of like the idea of this because the rave culture in Montana is just so bad. And it's around a lot. And thankfully, live music has started to become more popular again. <coughs> so the Portal Music Festival is this weekend at Lolo Hot Springs. It's August 1, 2, and 3. Um, it is a transformational festival geared towards shifting festival culture in Montana. Portal is a three days live play and create with yoga, workshops, sacred spaces, visual and performing arts, as well as night music. Um, you know, a lot of parents worry about their children like getting caught up in this weird rave culture and getting caught up in a lot of negative things that can be associated with a rave culture. And so this is, um, this Portal Music Festival is a response to this, where it's just going to be a bunch of love and having fun and listening to music and doing yoga and not being around anything negative. So, yeah. Sounds I like, cool. Yeah. I like the idea of that. We need to stay away from that mindless beat music. Um, the t on Friday, there's a Meet Your Practitioner Night with Dr. Amy Haynes. Uh, she is at 5 p.m. at Meadowsweet Herbs. You can come and go and meet the practitioners at Meadowsweet Herbs that like put on all the um, herb classes and really you know n learn know about all the holistic practices. Yeah, and there on Friday, there's a First Friday Tasting at the Good Food Store at 5:30. Um, 5:30, five dollars. August 1st, and you can just go and taste picnic cheeses, and you'll get with wines to go with those, and you'll get a list of cheeses and wine suggestions and meats and stuff to go along with picnics and, you know, just good ideas. 
Okay. There's a family movie night um, up at Most Wanted at 6 p.m. at the First Baptist Church. That'll be on Friday. Um, it's at 6 p.m. Yeah, it's free. Go check it out. What movie is it? Muppets Most Wanted. I have a trailer, but we only have four minutes left, yeah. so I'm going to we'll let you use in. your imagination. Yeah. And then uh, there is a music festival, a DAT music conference, August 1st to 3rd in downtown Missoula. It's the Digital and Analog Technologies Music Conference. So it'll include electronic music performance, visual art, new media, as well as workshops, discussion panels, and more. So if you still like your rave culture, go to that. And then this Friday is First Friday, and there'll be a lot of art. So we've got Missoula Art Museum, Montana Art, Montana Natural History Center, Tides Gallery of Bathing Beauties, Market on Front, E3 Convergence Gallery, Montana Art and Framing, Monty Dolak Gallery, Gecko Designs, which is a new one, 523 North Higgins Avenue, Betty's Divine, Taco Del Sol, MCAT, Rocky Mountain Map Gallery, Clay Studio of Missoula, Brink Gallery, and many, many more. Go to MissoulaEvents.net to find out about any of these events and more and what's going on this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So well, that's what I've got. So, you know, we're going to start wrapping up the show, but if you want to find more information, we're going to show up the website. You can log on to our, um, our Facebook page, our mm -hmm. Twitter page. Um, Here's our Twitter page. Boom. Oh my God, are people tweeting us? No, that's not us. That's oh. just other tweets that Wake Up Missoula is following so we can know what's going on with news and stuff. Really? And our Facebook page is right there. Yeah. Yay! Looks and we posted our last Monday show. And I took a picture of Ben. Oh, yeah! Jamming out at the VFW. And he's the blurry one. Oh, Ben! Yep. I could not get it. I mean, like, everyone. I'll have to was, tag like,